How's it going? I'm Neil Ostrovsky and this is Ampark Mastering. Today I'm just going to do a really quick overview of my typical workflow when I'm mastering an audio track. So whenever I get a pre-master, it starts off in this playback computer, which is a Mac Pro running Pro Tools. At this point, I'm listening to the track from start to finish, checking for any issues that might be present and taking notes. If there are any issues that do need to be addressed, I can always insert plugins in Pro Tools before it is sent out to the analog signal chain. So from Pro Tools via AES, it's routed directly into this Crane Song Head Quantum Converter. The converter has some harmonic enhancement options, triode, pentode, and tape emulation. These can be very nice. Definitely need to be used with caution because you can overdo it very easily. So at this point, it is routed from the Crane Song directly into this Masselec transfer console, which is the centerpiece of the studio. I have um, source select buttons, which are the different converters. So I have this Crane Song converter. I have this ADI2 Pro converter. The majority of the time, I'm using the Crane Song. So once I've selected which converter I want to use, I have phase invert buttons and this first set of filters. If I need to filter out any unwanted high frequencies or low frequencies, there's it's basically high pass and low pass, and I can filter out whatever I'd like here. Below that are input trims, and then on this next section would be where I am inserting all the different pieces of outboard gear. There are two flip switches which are useful. It allows me to flip the order if I had like, for instance, EQ, then compression, you could engage the flip button and then switch it to compression, then EQ, an audition, which you prefer. Another nice feature is on this first insert, I have this MS button, which turns this into a mid side insert. For instance, if I had this EQ on the mix on that insert, the left side, the EQ would just EQ the center and the right side would just EQ the side. So that's handy to have. Down here with um, insert four, if you have this button selected, it becomes a parallel insert. So this gets used quite a bit for parallel compression. You can blend in some compression underneath the mix or if you, let's say, wanted to add a little bit of reverb on, on a mix, like some live board mix that was really dry and needed a little bit more depth, you could blend in a little bit of reverb underneath, so that's nice to be able to do as well. The next set of filters here are this elliptical filter. If you had a mix that had excessive low end on the sides, um, something you might want to pay a little closer attention to if you're mastering for vinyl, you can engage this, select the frequency, and then from that frequency below, it makes everything mono. This is a stereo width. You can make the mix wider or narrower, and then below that are output trim controls. This next set of buttons are just uh, selecting what you're monitoring. Uh, the different sources, this tape return, like if I'm mixing into Pro Tools, and then the uh, capture computer. Over here we have the speaker select button, so the, the mains would be the key three speakers, which I'll talk about a little more in a minute. And then this auxiliary switch sends the signal to an external switcher where it controls the Genelex, the NS10s, and the Oratones. Now normally you don't see speakers like this in a mastering room, and frankly these last three sets of speakers don't get used much when I'm mastering. I do mix here as well, so they get used when I'm mixing, and sometimes it's nice to just have another set of speakers to give your ears some rest, change of scenery, so that's why they are here. And rounding out the monitor section, I have switches here for 
This one takes the left side of the mix and puts it in both speakers, right side of the mix in both speakers, and of course you have stereo, mono, and difference, which is the sides. So it's really convenient to have those right at your fingertips. All the knobs are detented, so it helps with recall. As far as outboard gear, um, some of the pieces that get used quite often are this RJR Bax EQ, which is fantastic for some gentle tone shaping. I've got this Manly Massive Passive All Tube EQ, and its big brother, the Manly Varimu Limiter Compressor. There is some other gear here that does not get used for mastering, this transient designer and a number of preamps over here, this Focusrite and the Tube Tech and the Brent Averill Neves. I do some tracking from time to time in here, so that's why they're here, but they do not get used for mastering. So at this point, once I've done whatever I think is needed for the track in the analog path, the signal is sent from the Masilek to the AD side of the Crane Song converters and routed directly to the capture computer, which is this iMac running Reaper. So in Reaper is where I would insert any other plugins that I might want to use, things like EQ, compression, clipping. Certainly the last step would be limiting. And at that point, hopefully I have something that I can print that everybody will be happy with. Now, the other benefit of having a playback computer and a capture computer is if you're doing a session that has mixes that are in all different sample rates, you know, you have to contend with sample rate conversion typically. But since I'm running everything through the analog domain, and using two separate computers, you just set the capture computer to the desired sample rate and you avoid SRC altogether. So that's really the best way to do it. So ultimately, none of this gear will make any difference if I can't tell what I'm listening to. And this is where having these key threes is a huge advantage. They're cardioid design. They have woofers on the sides and back of the speakers. And with the internal DSP, they work to cancel out early reflections from the side and back walls, similar to noise canceling headphones. So from around 70 Hertz and up, they have a cardioid radiation pattern. This makes the imaging very precise and the lows and low mids very clear and detailed. They aren't that big of a speaker and it's quite surprising how much volume and low end can come out of these. They're virtually flat from 20K down to 28 Hertz. And it's quite rare for a speaker this size to produce such low frequencies with any authority, but I can hear things down in that range quite well. Frankly, I can hear things on these speakers that I just couldn't hear on any other speakers that I tried. So I'm really pleased to have a set of these at the studio. Now, obviously, there's not a set method that's going to work for every situation. Sometimes I get a track and I want to add a little more coloration, maybe some tube saturation. So I'm going to rely more on the outboard analog gear. Other times the track doesn't need a lot and maybe I'm gonna just use a few plugins in the box. And then other times I'm using a combination of both. So it's really nice to have that flexibility. And that is the quick overview of my workflow here at M Park Mastering. Thanks again for checking out this video. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to get in touch with me, I'd love to talk to you about your project. I can be reached via the details in the description below or go to mparkmastering.com. That's all for today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care.